Hello students, today the lecture is Japan had a traditional royal family but the emperor in Kyoto inferred a lot of power to the shaguns. So the Tokugawa shaguns period was from 1603 to 1868. Since the early 17th century, Japan was ruled by the Tokugawa shaguns. The shaguns were the military dictators. They were based on the capital of Edo, that is the present-day Tokyo. They were supported by the aristocratic governors, daimyo, and a privileged class of warriors, samurai. The samurai were the lord over the peasants and artisans. In the 19th century, the shaguns were financially weakened. But Japanese society was very traditionally backward. It was very one-directional under the military dictator sort of arrangement in the shogun period. The world was going through changes. There was the rise of nationalism in China. There was this foreign intervention by Britain in China, but Japan was still very much into its own bubble, into its own traditional thinking, and they did not embrace any change. So in the 19th century, with the encroachment of the West in China, the Chinese nationalist movement, which was a movement that had a revolutionary nationalist rhetoric, and it is called the Nationalist Movement of Sonojoy, usually translated as Revere the Emperor, Expel the Barbarians. So here we can see the rise of nationalism with this slogan in China, which literally meant respecting the monarch, expelling the barbarians. So it did influence some Japanese nationalists, but the ruling power were not aware or ignored the nationalist movements in their neighboring countries. So gradually the Japanese revolutionaries also adopted a slogan very much similar to the Chinese slogan, enrich the country, strengthen the army. They sought to create a nation state capable of standing equal among foreign powers. And that was the main ethos of the Meiji Re Revolution or Meiji Restoration, which we will discuss a bit later. And that has been possible. The Meiji Restoration was due to the interference of the Western countries, particularly the United States and later Britain, but the ruling power, the Shaguns, were not aware of the nationalistic awareness of the local people. So, so in the major restoration, we will see the downfall of the Shogunate period and the changes, constitutional changes that emerges in the Japanese society. So this is the picture of the Tokugawa Iyasu, the first shagun, from 1543 to 1616 at the Toshio Shrine in Nikko, Japan. So this uh, shows uh, the presence of the shagunate period from 1603 to 1867. This is the image of the large shagun of Edo shagunate Tokugawa 
Yoshinobu and the title of this um, image is the Meiji Restoration, the End of the Shogunate and Building of a Modern Japanese State. So Japan had been a very traditional dictatorial society, not aware of the nationalist movement that was happening in its neighboring countries, the progress that the Western world was making. But finally, Japan did go through changes. They had the Meiji Restoration and then they embarked on an expansionist policy. So the changes in the Japanese society was modernization period in Japan. U.S. Navy Commodore Matthew Perry and his humiliating treaty on the Shogun. Then the Meiji Restoration took place. The Shogun or the Bakufu were overthrown by the revolutionaries. Then they restored the imperial rule, centralized the nation state and they established the Meiji Constitution of 1889. So what happens when the U.S. Navy Commodore Matthew, Matthew Perry comes to the Japanese shore? It led to the opening of Japan. It was a big change for the conservative, traditional, as I said, a society that was run by the dictators, by the shaguns, who had his voice, the only voice in the Japanese society that people had to listen. But with the Western intervention, a lot of changes came to Japan. So in 1853, Matthew C. Perry commander of the American squadron to the China Seas and Japan, started putting military pressure on Japan to open up its border to foreign business. Japan at this stage was a small feudal country, but Perry demanded that Japan embrace the capitalist system. Japan was confused about how to deal with the world capitalism and international relations of East Asia. And in 1853, U.S. Navy Commodore Matthew Perry sailed a fleet of modern steamed power warships in Tokyo Bay with his majestic force. Commodore Perry managed to overcome all resistance and then he imposed a humiliating treaty on the Shagun, the Treaty of Kanagawa. So I would suggest the students to look into the clauses of the Treaty of Kanagawa and how it humiliated Japan and how Japan opened its door to the foreign powers and how this humiliation led Japan to embark on the expansionist policy. So as the shaguns, they readily signed the treaty with the foreign power, with the US Commodore Matthew Perry. The Japanese people were not happy about it. As I said that there was some nationalist views and the rise of nationalism in some sector of the Japanese society as influenced by the Chinese nationalism. They did not like the treaty that the shoguns did with the U.S. Commodore Matthew Perry. So this picture shows Commodore Matthew Perry and his team. His team were welcomed to Yokohama. And this picture is taken from a source 
that is titled the Meiji Restoration, the end of the Shogunate and the building of the modern Japanese state. So in your readings you will find that there was people, the Japanese, who were not, who did not like or who did not accept the way the Shagun signed the treaty and opened Jap Japan's door to the foreigners uh, and, and how the subsequent changes in Japan took place. So this image is an image that speaks of the Meiji Restoration or the Meiji Revolution. But before we discuss the Meiji Revolution, we need to see how the revolution happened. As I discussed that the Shogun, they signed a treaty with the Western power, with Matthew Perry, the U.S. Commodore, and that upset some Japanese local people. I have also discussed that some Japanese were influenced by the nationalist ideology of China, and they were not happy with the Shagun dictatorial rule of Japanese society, and with the signing of the treaty, the Shagun with U.S. Commodore Perry that upset a group of Japanese people. So in June 1863, a radical group from the Choshu feudal domain of Japan, they rose against this treaty. Choshu warriors and the Satsuma warriors first attacked the foreign shipping in the Straits of Shimo Noseki. In order, the Shaguns take action against the foreigners. But the emergence of this radical group frightened the Emperor Komi and the highest official Shaguns of the court, and they chased away the Choshu warriors from Kyoto. But the great powers of Europe and the Americans did not want their business interests damaged the Cho by the Choshu warriors. So when Matthew Perry initially entered the Japanese shore, it was followed by other powers, the English, the uh, Dutch naval powers. In the sh on the shore of Japan. So the English, French, American and Dutch joint naval forces attacked the strategic places of the Choshu warriors. The Emperor Komi was angry with the Choshu warriors because earlier with their attack on the foreigners they acted against the Emperor's will. So the Emperor named the Choshu as the enemy of the imperial court. The great Western powers, through military pressure on the Emperor Komi, obtained the ratification of the treaties from the Emperor. So after being suppressed by the great powers, the Choshu and the Satsuma warriors were convinced that to confront the great powers, they have to take drastic steps to reform their military forces. In Satsuma, new homogeneous army of samurai warriors was established. In Choshu, low-ranking samurai, farmers and townsmen joined to form an armed militia. In the meantime, the shoguns wanted to exploit the situation against the Choshu. In 1866, with the emperor's sanction, the shoguns organized an expedition to punish the Choshu, but the Choshu and Satsuma organized a military alliance. They were able to defeat the Bakufu or the Shoguns. And now 
commenced or emerged the Meiji Restoration. So in the Meiji Restoration, the revolutionaries, they had strategized their moves and planned how to execute the revolution. So please go through your reading. You will find more detailed information on that. So what the revolutionaries did that they spread the message that they started the revolution to restore power to the emperor, which during the Shagun period, the Shagun just made the emperor a nominal ruler and they ruled, but the revolutionaries in the Meiji Restoration, they said that they are doing it for the emperor and they are restoring the power to the emperor. And hence it is called the Meiji Restoration. So the Restoration government made the son of Emperor Komi, who died in 1866. So they made his son Emperor Meiji as the Japan's new sovereign. So Meiji, which means in English Enlightenment government, is an era name adopted in 1868 by the new government that overthrew Japan's previous military government of the Tokugawa shaguns or the Bokufu. So uh, in, your, in your reading, you will find the changes that was brought about by the Meiji Restoration. So the Meiji regime rapidly adopted Western modes of education, military organization, and technology. In 1905, Japan defeated Russia and helped to undermine the legitimacy of the Russian government. This paved the way for a Russian revolution. The first Sino-Japanese War of 1894 and 1895 resulted in the Qing, the Manchu dynasty, China surrendering control of the Korean Peninsula to Japan. After the war and before 1910, many Japanese migrated to Korea through treaties, Japan became a protectorate in Korea. Japan's colonial rule in Korea was between 1910 to 1945. Japan remained a major power in East Asia until 1945. Korea was under the Japanese rule from 1910 to 1945. Japan embarked on the Japanization of Korea, policy of modernization and assimilation. It accelerated industrialization and public works. In the 1920s and 1930s, the Red Peasant movements took place against the Japanese colonial rule in Korea. With the surrender of Japan, Japan's rule over Korea ended, and the armed forces of the United States and Soviet Union entered Korea. Hence, it is the beginning of the Cold War between North Korea and South Korea. Japan declared war on China in 1937, resulting in the Nanking Massacre and other atrocities. China joined the Allied powers in 1941 during the Second World War. Japan attacked Pearl Harbor on 7th December 1941. Japan attacked Northern Australia during 1942 and 1943, and the United States came to the rescue of Australia. Japan also attacked Papua New Guinea, which was the Australian overseas territory until 1975. USA dropped two atom bombs, nuclear weapons on Hiroshima and Nagasaki on the 6th and the 9th of August, 1945. After the Second World War, Japan surrendered on 15th August 1945. So this picture shows the explosion of the MV Neptuna and the clouds of smoke from oil storage tanks hit during the first Japanese air raid on Australia's mainland at Darwin on 19th February 1942. So this is how the Japan 
that was a very closed door society opened up to the foreigners to the western powers with the arrival of u.s commodore perry and with the subsequent arrival of other foreign powers uh, england and uh, holland so um, that that is how they opened their um, doors to the foreign powers and uh, as a result the major restoration took place because they did not want to surrender to the foreign powers but eventually and uh, uh, during the after the Meiji Revolution, the industrialization take took place. Uh, Japanese society went through uh, changes, the constitutional changes, and uh, it embarked on the expansionist policy. And finally, in the Second World War, Japan had to surrender. Thank you.